Well, you know what? Hey, from the outside, the, the NFL coaching profession kind of seems like sometimes a competition to out genius the next guy to think of the brand new thing. And that going with something simple and obvious and making it work might be an underrated skill. But it seems like it's one, you know, especially yesterday, calling all those run plays in a row. It seems like it's something that that you do well. How fair are, are both of those assessments in your opinion? Um, like, I don't think you're ever trying to out genius. Um, you know, I got to let go of my last job when you try to think like that, right? You know, you're just trying to figure out what your players do well and just, you know, if it's working, you know, just keep that rolling. And uh, the guys did a great job, you know, blocking up front that, you know, made my life a little easier last night. And so uh, I don't think – I think you try to find the weaknesses in the defense, but you don't just try to find the weaknesses. You try to find the weaknesses that match up with your strengths. And, um, you know, I felt like that that was something that, you know, we were, we were able to find a way yesterday. Is, is being willing to go with maybe the simple obvious or or maybe the way you say it, what's working, something that you wanted to make an emphasis of doing better in your next job? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, I, I told myself I'll always make it about the players. Um, not saying I tried to be a genius the last one, but sometimes I think you try to overthink it and you try to feel, feel like you got to. You got to put this person in this position. You got to put this person in this position. Sometimes you just have to trust your guys, give them the ownership and let them deliver. And uh, I've been, uh, I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, just the guys have been around right here and just that they're just having a lot of, a lot of fun and having a lot of energy. And, you know, it's exciting to watch from the booth. That's for sure. Sean, just talk about the energy as being a, a big part of what you've done differently, or maybe, you know, brought to this uh, team in terms of your new role as the coordinator here. How much of that has been an emphasis? And I know we talked about it a little bit, but in terms of keeping it up week to week to week, it's probably easy to have energy week one, but when you're doing it over and over to be able to keep that going, how difficult has that been? I mean, it's not difficult because it's it's kind of who I am and it's kind of who we are. Um, you know, I don't think, I think on a week to week, if you're having to change who you are off of a winner or loss or just on a day to day, then um, you know, I think that's when people will question you. And so I try to pride myself on being the same person every single day. Um, and I think we have a lot of guys in the building that are the same way. And so uh, no matter who we're facing, um, no matter the, you know, what happened on the outcome, if we believe in our process and, you know, we believe in who we are with our energy, um, that, you know, we're going to be the same day to day. Appreciate the time, Joe. Thanks very much. Thank you. Coach Brady, Mookie Harkins, World Force Sports 1080. Good win yesterday, Coach. Thank you. Now, how do you deal with – um, we already know that you got some sort of game plan going into the game, an idea, right? But you found su success by running the ball. I'm not sure if that was quite the game plan, but how do you incorporate your original game plan with what's going on in game? Well, like I, I, you know, I'm probably a broken record when I say this, but there's a way to win every game and, you know, um, the other coaches get paid too, right? And so, you know, we, we think we have an idea going into the game about, hey, how we think this is how they might play it or, you know, this is how we think our guys are going to respond to something. And then, you know, sometimes we get that, sometimes we don't. And it's, you know, it's critical that, you know, we we find that, you know, whatever that is that that is working or try to continue to um, to try to find whatever that is if it's not. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think last night was just a, a product of, you know, I don't think anybody envisioned being able to have that much success. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say I knew that going into the game, but I felt confident in the guys up front. I felt confident that we'd be able to run the football and, um, you know, it wasn't broken. So why try to fix it? And, um, you know, I was proud of the way that the guys responded and kind of how they played and, you know, they didn't blink. They were like, do it again. And uh, just seeing our receivers and our tight ends, you know, uh, even Josh, just uh, the way that they were playing, knowing that the pass game wasn't the emphasis. Uh, it was a lot of fun, to, a lot of fun to see. Absolutely. Coach. And how has Mike Shula been instrumental with, you know, you, you know, being the play caller? Uh, Schultz is awesome. I mean, he's obviously he brings a, a load of experience, um, you know, so he's great for me, you know, uh, does a great job with ideas and just, um, you know, keeping me kind of uh, present sometimes, you know, you can get overwhelmed a little bit early in the week. You try to figure out, you know, trying to figure out the defense and uh, he does a great job of just kind of keeping me level headed and um, brings, a, you know, so as much help as me as it is for the quarterbacks. And so I'm, I'm grateful for him to be here. Coach, uh, you've been four games in at the helm. Uh, this team has struggled with uh, a rhythm. This team has struggled with identity. What would you say would, would be this offensive identity these, the last four games? Um, you know, honestly, I think part of the identity is that we're finding different ways to win. And I know that's that's a, um, <laughs> that's not even really an answer, but I think that that's important. You know, we're trying to build something bigger. And, uh, 
um, is uh, the more that we can do, the different ways that we can find ways to win. At the end of the day, we're just trying to find that way. And, you know, if it if, if we've showed if we have to throw the ball 50 times, you know, um, putting, putting, uh, putting everything on Josh, you know, we've shown that we can find a way to get that done. And yesterday was evident that we can do the complete opposite. And so um, just having faith that we know that it's going to be different week to week and as long as we find that way. Um, I know that's not an identity. Um, that might be a lot of just words, but um, I think our guys believe that whatever Matt, whatever happens, no matter what happens, just find a way to score one more point than them. I hope that that ends up being our identity. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the holidays. Thanks. Thank you, you too. Yeah, hey, Coach. James Cook doing things that we haven't seen from a Bills running back since Thurman Thomas. Uh, what have you seen from him throughout the course of this season that's allowed him to take such a significant step in an increased role uh, this season? I mean, I, I think he's just, uh, you know, you can see the confidence that he's playing with. Um, and just like any running back, you know, you get some touches. Uh, you kind of you see it a little more. And, um, you know, the game kind of slows down for him, right? He's a second-year player. And, you know, with experience comes, you know, just the confidence and seeing the holes, seeing the cuts, you know, getting a feel of how defenses are trying to play. And um, I think he's doing a great job as the season's going on of getting that com getting comfortable in there. And, uh, you know, the O-line's doing an absolutely amazing job of opening up the holes where – you know, makes life a little easier for the for the uh, for the running back to, you know, get four yards before he's getting touched and whatnot. But but Jimbo's doing a great job, and I'm loving being able to get him going in the pass game as well. He's making a lot of plays. And Mookie mentioned the game plan. Cook finished with a career high in touches. W was there an idea leading into the game that that you might see that uh, as the game wore on, or is that more of a product of just how the game played out? Yeah, I mean, I I. I'd be lying to you if I said, hey, the second half, my intent was to throw four or five passes. Um, but uh, it was kind of how the, the flow of the game was going and the way that he was running the football. And, um, you know, uh, you know, look, Ty did a great job in there. And, you know, I always feel confident when, when Latavius is in there. But Jimbo was doing, you know, uh, as long as he was out on the field, good things were happening yesterday. And it, it might not be that way every week, but, uh, you know, the way that he was running the rock, you know, it was hard to take it out of his hands. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Joe, John Warrell, AP. Oh, I, I, I'm i fascinated by like the, this whole uh, aspect of, you know, being out genius or, or out geniusing yourself, because when it comes to failure, no one likes to admit to failure, but Sean McDermott has always said one of the most valuable things that have happened to him was him getting fired in Philly in retrospect. How much um, of a turning point was and, and and what what I mean I guess what did you get out of what happened as difficult as it was in Carolina? I mean I, I can go on and on. Um, look, I think the the basics was um, I wasn't going to make excuses for why it didn't work out. Right, I was going to figure out okay, hey, where were my blind spots? What can I do better if I get the next opportunity? And um, part of that happened to be just being able to come here and be a part of this organization and you know sit in the QB room and um, just learning a new offense. And so. Uh, a lot of that was just uh, um, understanding the relationships of, of the players and getting around the guys. And, um, you know, I think I think as coaches, sometimes we try to get the perfect play and we realize that, um, you know, oftentimes it's, it's really hard to get guys open in this league. Right. Sometimes your guys have to make plays. And so just uh, realizing that I can trust our guys, that they're going to deliver and give them that ownership. And I think the, the genius lies in the players. It's definitely not the coach. Because some people don't learn from failure and some, you know, there, there's a stubbornness there. How did you allow yourself to, to, to become open to um, other thoughts, other ideas? Uh, I think, I think that's growth, right? Like uh, no matter what, if you're a coordinator for 20 years, I, I, you know, you gotta be growing your offense and um, you know, developing. And if you try to, if you try to do the same offense year to year, guys are going to figure that out. And so uh, I think that's just part of, just part of growth, regardless of, having success or not, you got to find ways to um, just kind of evolve, um, you know, because everybody else is trying to, when offenses are having success, people are studying you. When defenses are having success, they're studying the defenses. And so, hey, how can you evolve so that you kind of stay ahead of the race? And, um, you know, so I think all coaches just trying to develop. And just la lastly, in, 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 in that sense, I mean, the success that you had running the ball yesterday and over the past couple of weeks, how much do you think that that really opens up the offense to be able to do multiple things and keep defenses off balance. How much, how much do you think that opens up the offense to more things? 
I mean, it's it's uh, as much as you can play two dimensional football. Um, you know, it, it makes life a lot easier. You know, I'm just in general, right? You know, you're a defense. You wanna you wanna know that you can get in three point stance and just rush after the quarterback because they're passing it or in, like in a two minute third down situation, right? And so, as much as we can stay ahead of the chains and and be two dimensional where we can run it or pass it, um, I think is only uh, an advantage for us. And so, um, you know, I, I, we have the best offensive line coach in the in the league and. Um, does such a great job at the run game and, and getting those guys to understand how we're attacking blocks, how we're approaching blocks and uh, why we're doing what we're doing. And so um, yesterday was just evident of that. And, uh, you know, as much as we can stay on schedule, which we were able to do yesterday allows, allows us to just continue calling it. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Hey, Joe, your offensive line goes from Micah Parsons to Khalil Mack. Uh, why do you feel confident heading into this matchup, knowing that they they did a great job against Micah Parsons last night? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, every week, um, you know, uh, every week in the, in the NFL, right, the teams, the D-line is absolutely stacked. And, you know, there's always people that are going to be able to present issues. Um, but I just think it's the mindset and the approach of our guys, um, you know, that they do a great job preparing and understanding, hey, how do I, how to approach the blocks like I just talked about, or, you know, in the case of Micah yesterday about how much he moved around and a guy like Khalil Mack, when you got 15 sacks, um, you know, you have to understand where he is at any given time and making sure you're trying to get four hands on him or whatever you have to do. And so I think the way that our guys are preparing and they understand, you know, kind of their issues and, um, you know, the threats that come with it, um, I think that they'll be able to have success with it. And then knowing what James Cook and the offensive line did last night, what they're capable of, what is the challenge for the group as you guys close out the regular season and then hopefully make a push into the playoffs too? I think the biggest thing is that, you know, yeah, yesterday was a was a win, um, but it has nothing to do with today and has nothing to do with this game on Saturday, right? And so, um, you know, regardless of the success we had in the run game, yes, you know, yesterday we're going to have to bring it in and have that same approach when we come in the building tomorrow um, and know that we're going on the road and, um, records don't matter this time of the year. Stats don't matter at this time of year. It's it's the NFL, and, and we're going to have to bring our A game to be able to win this game on Saturday. And so I think that that's the biggest thing, um, you know, moving forward with it. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe, I hope you're well. Um, I think it's been touched on a little bit, but um, when you prepare all week and you go into a game or even go into a series having an idea of what you want to do, how difficult is it to kind of adjust on the fly and, you know, if something's working, just kind of stick with it and kind of go away from whatever you had planned? Um, look, I think when it's working, it's, it's a lot easier to stick with it, but I think a lot of it also has to do with the trust in your coaches and the communication with your players and the coaches, like the guys did a great job on the sidelines yesterday of like, Hey, you know, uh, the guys are liking this or Hey man, stick with this. So, um, it's not just a one man operation, right? Like, you know, it's a, we're, we're very collaborative of, you know, an offensive staff and the players, like I want them on the sidelines. Like I want them talking about what they want. And so it makes it a lot easier to call the plays when I know the guys want it or when coaches are recommending it. Um, you know, when you have all kinds of information at your fingertips um, and you're kind of trying to play a chess game, how difficult is it, to, is it at times to kind of just, keep it simple instead of, you know, maybe I'm going to call this because I think they're going to do this. Or if I call this, they're going to try and counter it. So I should call something else. Like how difficult is it sometimes to just kind of keep things simple? Um, you know, look, I think when you have Josh Allen, sometimes you can just, just let him kind of be great and not try to make it too complicated. Right. You know, and just in general with the rest of our guys, like I think sometimes just lining up and being able to, you know, put the ball down and let our guys go win in one-on-one matchups is, you know, it was, uh, makes actually life a lot easier for the guys than trying to, you know, move guys around, emotion this, shift this, and hope to get this look. And, you know, the odds of getting that is sometimes slim. And so sometimes it's just line up and let our guys go in. And, um, you know, uh, yesterday the guys were able to do that. Shortly after you you uh, took over as offensive coordinator, you talked about kind of doing everything with a purpose. Um how much does that go into getting your running backs involved in the passing game as more than just a check down or an outlet if the first or, you know, second reads aren't there? Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's critical. At the end of the day, we have five offensive linemen, right? And they're the only ones that aren't eligible. And if they have to defend six guys on any given snap, um, you know, Josh included, I think it makes makes it a little difficult on defenses, right? Our job as offensive coordinators is to limit a defensive player's call sheet, right? And, 
And the longer, the more that, you know, we get guys out on, you know, throwing the ball to the running backs, throwing the ball to the tight ends, you know, yeah, that, you know, it's, it's hard to get everybody to football. That's the reality of it. But as much as we're spreading it out, um, you know, and doing those things, it makes it a little tougher on the defense. And so that's just, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've been fortunate the running backs have been able to cash in on the opportunities and um, hope, hope that they can do that moving forward. And then just lastly, how, how much is that thinking uh, led to Ty Johnson's increased uh, playing time? Yeah, I think um, just in general, I mean, you know, playing time is earned and Ty's done a great job of, you know, showing that, hey, he needs to be out on the football field and, um, you know, it's the, the work that he put in since he's been here. He, he got in here late in training camp and, you know, we saw him for one preseason game and just seeing how he approached practice when he was on the practice squad. And, um, you know, nothing goes on none just in his work ethic and uh, his preparation and it's led to success. And so uh, um, that's what I've been so excited about that running back room, just the way that they kind of approach things and prepare. And um, that's why I guess day, days like yesterday, you know, make it exciting to see kind of their work kind of show. Thanks. Hey, Joe. Uh, I was curious, obviously, you've been asked a lot about the run, but I was curious yesterday during the game, was there a moment when you were like, oh, yeah, like we can we can keep going with this, like they're not stopping like this? Was it like a play or a drive when you realize like we're going to be able to run the ball pretty much as we would like to? I, I mean, I think there was never like a moment where I was just like, oh, man, we're good to go. I mean, at the end of the day, all it takes is one negative run and you're behind the chains and you're having to, um, you know, kind of get back into it and stay out of third down. But um, so that yesterday was just a, a product of the confidence in the offensive line um, and the mentality that they were kind of playing with and the way that they were finishing, you know, seeing Deion Dawkins finish a block, you know, downfield as far as he did. And, you know, just seeing the way that the energy that they were after, you know, scoring touchdowns, it was like, hey, that made it a lot easier, not as opposed to like, hey, I can just call this and guarantee it's going to work. It was just seeing the, you know, the way that they were playing, you know, made it a lot easier just calling those. And I know, obviously, on a different subject, you know, Josh didn't throw a lot of passes last night, but he did set a record for passing and rushing touchdowns in the games in a season. And I was curious what you've kind of seen from him in these four games since you took over as OC. Have you seen anything different in Josh? Is your relationship with him kind of the same? Like, I was just curious what these last four games, like working with Josh in this new role, have kind of been like. I mean, I, I, I've I've loved it. Um, you know, it's 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 been um you know, it's it's a lot of fun being able to call plays with him with him as your quarterback, right? And knowing that, hey, that's he's he's an eraser, right? Like there's plays out there yesterday that, you know, weren't good plays, right? And Josh Allen makes it right. And so uh, there's a lot of confidence in that and knowing that hey, our quarterback can can really do anything and um and seeing how he is, even when we're not throwing the football, like all he cares about is winning. Um and uh and I have that same mindset and our guys have the same mindset. And so um had a lot of fun with it um I'm enjoying you know just seeing him just you know uh the way he's playing you know he's scoring in the run game pass game it really doesn't matter um and I know he's having a lot of joy playing ball right now last thing from me I was just curious when you after games now with Josh like when you guys sit down and discuss you know the plays that were called and stuff what kind of is that process like is a lot of like I like this I didn't like this like just how does that work in general yeah, I mean, I just think in general, and a lot of it was fortunate, right, being the QB coach and just the open dialogue, um, you know, having a, a good feel of, you know, kind of what he likes and what he doesn't. And um, at the end of the day, you know, if there's something Josh Allen doesn't like or um, a throw that he, you know, he does, he might not think that that plays very good, I, you know, take it out, right? And uh, at the end of the day, he's pulling the trigger. So, you know, we have a lot of dialogue early in the week about a plays, hey, would you rather this or this? Um and because at the end of the day, those guys got to go out there and actually throw the ball and deliver. So, you know, we, we come in after a game and kind of uh, uh, just kind of go through it and kind of give thoughts on, hey, if we play these guys again, if we do this again, what would you, what would you do differently? But um, throughout the week, it's just open communication. So on game day, um, he kind of knows what I'm thinking and I kind of know what he's thinking. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Hey, Joe, um, to follow up on Josh. Um, he joked after the game that he felt like it was a group project where he did nothing and still got an A, which I think takes away a little bit from what he actually did in the game. But just, you know, when he yeah, has a game that he kind of, <laughs> when he has a game like that, do you guys have any different communication within the game of like you reminding him anything of just like, he obviously wants to win, but it's such an unusual game for him. Does the conversation change at all? Um, no, I think you watch him, you, when you watch, uh, one of the perks of being in the box is you get to see everybody, you get to see the sidelines, see kind of the communication with it, right? Um, being observant of that, but just um, 
I know that Josh wants to win. And then when I see some handoffs and as soon as he hands the ball off, he's carrying on his fake and then the ball cuts back and he's going to find a block. That's when I'm like, you know what, he's, he's, I don't have to worry about anything right now. Like he's, he's as bought into the run game as possible. Right. And so um, there's times where we had a long drive and, you know, we only asked him to throw twice, got on the headset and he was like, man, just keep calling it. Um, so he's, uh, he's entirely bought in and I think so are the guys into him. Um, and, you know, he knows that the way that he plays, right. Everybody's going to kind of follow him. And so uh, just seeing the way that he was working yesterday when it wasn't just the past game, uh, I think it was, was cool to see. Awesome. And then I was wondering um, your vantage point of Steph's one-handed catch on third down, I think it was, and then um, like replays of it as well, just kind of what it was like watching that live and afterwards as well. Yeah. So uh, obviously great play call, right? You got a guy coming right off the edge free, Josh Allen, go make a guy miss and, and Steph Diggs go just make a one-handed catch exactly like we had it designed. Um, but no, I mean, that's what, that's who Steph Diggs is, right? You know, he, he makes incredible plays. It doesn't matter whether it's raining um, you know, uh, game on the line, you know, find your best player. And uh, regardless of what the score is, uh, Josh scrambles around, he steps full speed and he throws up and goes and makes a play, you know, on the field that, you know, it's hard to really tell if, you know, if he catches it, you get thankful for the whole crowd going crazy that uh, that was really the only way I knew that he caught it. Um, but uh, that's who Steph Diggs is, um, you know, unbelievable football player. Sweet. Thank you so much. Here we go. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Brady. George Redney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Well, how are you doing, bud? Uh, question, what is it, the energy that you bring? Because uh, most of the guys that come on from James Cook and some of the offensive linemen, and especially uh, Deion Dawkins in the offensive line, they say you bring a lot of energy uh, to the uh, to the room and, and with the guys. And I'm just wondering, where does that come from? Where's that energy that you have? come from uh for the offense to bring that to the offensive uh, room yeah look i i got i have a passion for this like i i don't coach just because i feel like i have to do it like this is i love doing this and so um i don't love just sitting in my office and just being able to just watch tape all day and try to game plan like i love being around the guys and communicating with the guys and and being out on the practice field and stalling like i love that and so um, it's not a, don't get me wrong. There's some caffeine involved, but there's not uh mm -hmm. it's not a fake, it's not a fake energy. Like I, I, I love it. And, uh, and I think that that's important and, uh, whether it's a fake it till you make it type of mindset, it's not, it's go out there and, you know, and I, I think if they see the passion that I have and the, the love that I have for this game and doing what I'm doing, um, that, uh, you know, maybe that they'll kind of, uh, mimic that. And how important is it to you to have a line that's been together for the season? That knock on wood, the guys have been, they played uh, every down together. How important is that to have a the continuity with an offensive line? It's huge. It's huge. Good. Run game and pass game where, where Josh knows. Um, and fortunately, we, you know, we have guys that are, you know, behind those guys, David Edwards and Bates and guys that, that like that, that we feel full confidence that they have to go in there. They're going to be able to have success. But knowing how the pocket's going to be, knowing – you know, with those guys communicating, if they're in any double teams or, you know, combination blocks of playing with the same guy over and over. I mean, it is huge. And I know it's rare in this league. And um, I'm grateful that, uh, you know, we've had the same five guys this year. And I hope to keep that forward, going forward. All right. One last question for you. And what, what, what is the athleticism of your line, too? Uh, between Morris being able to move, uh, Deion Dawkins being able to, to pull, and, and, and you having the guys do a lot of creative blocking now that I've seen that I hadn't seen in quite a while with the, with the, with the Bills offensive line. Yeah, look, I think it's, you know, we, we always talk, you know, from a, a pass game standpoint is, Hey, how can you put your players in position to have success and, you know, get this person running this route. But um, it's really no different from a run game standpoint in, in approaching blocks and, and how guys can block. And that's what coach Cromer does such a great job of just knowing, utilizing what you know, the skill sets of his offense alignment and knowing, um, and then um, of knowing what they do well and, and how to put it, put those guys in those positions based upon how how, how we can set a front or um, you know or vice, you know some other characteristics and then you know Brandon Bean just putting together those guys where you know this is the type of the offense line was built for this time of, this time of year right and so uh, being able to rely on them and them just kind of taking it and kind of running with it was uh, you know I think is important it was fun to see.